This is The Upper Room with Joe Kelly on WVOF, and it is a true honor to uh, introduce today a very talented, a multi-instrumentalist singer, songwriter, and producer. He has recently released a CD entitled Touch the Earth, and he's been working for many years on some very noble causes, which uh, we definitely support right here. And he is based out of Vermont. And right now, without further delay, I welcome Mr. Derek Jordan. How you doing, Derek? I'm great, Joe. How you doing today? And uh, I'm doing fine. And how, how are things up your way? I, I know it must be nice uh, living in the environment that you live in. It's beautiful up here, actually. We have a little bit of snow. Winter's coming a little early this year for Vermont. So got about two or three inches of snow already. Well, Derek, I, I sh- might be experiencing that tomorrow because uh, I'm driving up to Montreal for about <laughs> four days. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen some pictures of the snow already. So, yeah, <laughs> you know what it looks like. Right, right. <laughs> so, so releasing "Touch the Earth" is um, must be really exciting for you. Um, what goes into um, the feelings of yourself getting the word out uh, that you have a new release? Yeah, yeah. It's really, it is really exciting because. It's a record that uh, is really cl- close to my heart, and this, the concept of this record, which is really a, a celebration of nature and a call to environmental action, um, it's a collection of songs. It's a concept album, really, on environmentalism, and re- which reflects a lot of the work I've been doing over the last few years. And how did you uh, initially, I, I know it's been a, a while, but what was the initial uh, movement with yourself into these causes? Well, you know, for a long, I've been writing songs for a real long time, like you know, since I was just a just a teenager, and uh, now now I'm moving on. I'm 47 years old, and uh, I've been writing songs for about 32 years. And throughout all that time, one of my main themes was songs about nature and environmentalism, and that's how I kind of started, you know, with my interest in it. And then in the last five years, I started getting involved in doing uh, anti-nuclear work, anti-nuclear activism here in the Brattleboro, Vermont area, because we have a nuclear power plant, Vermont Yankee, that's just five miles south of Brattleboro. And uh, so we've been working to shut that down and just trying to raise awareness about various issues at the plant, safety issues, health issues, as relates to um, nuclear power. So so how is it uh, walking around town and people know that uh, you're involved in going against, I I guess, is it fair to say going against the mainstream feeling? Well, (laughs) the thing thing about the situation here is that, you know, when you live in a community, when you live in what we call a reactor community, you know, and there Mm -hmm. are a lot of them all around the United States, um, you know, the local economy is very much dependent upon the jobs at the reactor. So, you know, to be going against the mainstream, as you say, you know, you're basically, um, people might accuse me of trying to take their jobs away, you know. Mm-hmm. And so things can become real emotional um, when we have these meetings you know, where we talk about some of the, where, we, where we criticize and bring up some of the issues we have with the plant. People take it really personally, and sometimes they'll be screaming and getting really upset about, you know, trying to take their jobs away, which really isn't what we're trying to do, although we do want to shut it down. We'd like to see, um, you know, the whole thing be much more responsible, people be more responsible and have more responsible work. I mean, the reason, the main reason I'm against nuclear power, and I think most people would be, if they gave it much thought, is because of the waste issue, the nuclear waste, which is deadly for a quarter of a million years. And um, we just have not found any kind of uh, scientifically sound or environmentally uh, or ethically just way or environmentally safe way of, of storing this waste. And the plants have now been around for, you know, 30, 40 years almost, some of them or more. And there's just the waste is piling up and piling up. So we're, we're, we advocate that the best thing to do now is to shut them down and move responsibly to alternative energies, of which there are many and they're well-developed, and then to try and, uh, you know, just to do this in a, in a, like I say, do it in a responsible way so it doesn't affect people's livelihoods. You know, one great thing about your website, which uh, I'm going to let our listeners know right now, where you can uh, also uh, find information on ordering the new CD, uh, it's Derek Jordan, D-E-R-I-K-J-O-R-D-A-N.com. Actually, Joe, it's D-E-R-R-I-K. 
Oh, I, I mispronounced it? Or, uh, uh, yeah. You, it? Yeah. One okay. R. Okay, I'm It sorry. actually has two R's yeah, in Derek. Okay. D-E-R-R-I-K-J-O-R-D-A-N? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, there's a, a link right there to buy the CD, and, and he's an independent artist, and it's really uh, great to support an independent, positive person. Um, how about uh, your, your musical taste? Kind of like the radio show here is that you... You're just about into to anything. How 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 was um, first talk about uh, maybe growing up, your introduction into music, mm. and then uh, sure. how it goes today for yourself. Yeah, well, you know, I had a very um, kind of conservative upbringing in terms of music. I grew up in New Jersey, and uh, in a in a suburb of New York City, um, and you know, it was really uh, pretty much status quo. I listened to. I grew up with the Beatles, and my fa- my most inf- uh, artist that influenced me the most as a, as a kid growing up with the Beatles, Jimi Hendrix, James Taylor, and and then a little later on Stevie Wonder and all the Motown artists, and that was my early um, influence in music was pop music, which I love pop music, great pop music. But um, when I went to college, I went to Bennington College in Vermont, and that introduced introduced me to the beauty of Vermont as well, because I used to take lots of walks in the woods out here. Um, I met a wonderful teacher named Milford Graves, who's a fantastic drummer, who started to expose me to a lot of world music, stuff I never even didn't even know existed. Growing up in America, a lot of times here in this country, we right. we don't know about the rest of the world here for some strange reason, and um, and I just got really turned on to playing drums, and uh, even though I played uh, before that, I played guitar, keyboards, violin, cello. I started playing drums and uh, hand drums, particularly congas, and um, got really turned on to it. And um, it was really wonderful. And because of that, I started getting interested in the music of uh, Caribbean, Brazil, Africa, India, all all over the world, all the more uh, syncopated rhythmic music that we have. And why don't we get into a a song off of Touch the Earth? And uh, let's go with the title track. Okay. you recorded this uh, up at your home studios? I did. I have okay. a little studio up in my house and uh, <clears throat> have a lot of, <clears throat> it's a fun little place, it's a little nice room that's just filled with instruments, and I played a lot of them on this song. How, how did you record this one? How did it evolve? This one is actually kind of an interesting story, because I've recorded this song a few times, and the, one of the recordings of this song made it onto a record called Right as Rain, which was put out by Ben and Jerry's to benefit the uh, Rainforest Action Network. And uh, it was really a fun record because Jerry Garcia was on the record and Paul Winter and uh, oh, bunch, Mickey Hart, a bunch of cool people were on this record. Um, uh, Beau Soleil. So, um, but I had, I had a couple cuts on there, too, of my own songs, and one of them was Touch the Earth. And um, I never was quite happy with the way it came out on that record, my, my particular version of that song. So what I did is I adapted the song and just tried to keep some parts of the song. Mm-hmm. and to have them uh, then be played uh, and redo the song, basically, sort of a remix. But what happened was I ended up scrapping almost everything and starting over again. So <laughs> it didn't really quite work out the way I planned. But I'm playing everything on this song except for the horns, which are done by a group um, a group called Simba up here, which I play with also. It's kind of a reggae, funk, Latin jazz group. And uh, also the drum fills, which are done by uh, Johnny Yuma, who's a drummer up here. All right, we'll give a listen to it right now. My special guest is Derek Jordan, and his CD's called Touch the Earth. So we'll get into the title track, and we'll come back and talk with Mr. Derek Jordan. And that's from Touch the Earth from Derek Jordan, and that is the title track from it. And uh, we were talking off-air about the uh, different influences of world music. Um, You also uh, mentioned playing out live in Vermont, and uh, what's the uh, local music scene out there for you? Well, I play with a group called Simba here, which is real popular in the area. We do dances here. People come out and get crazy, and uh, we're actually going to be doing a solstice dance up here in Brattleboro. Um, we do. We usually perform on the solstices and the equinoxes, so we get all the crazy pagans to come and uh, and dance and carry on at our shows, which is a lot of fun. Simba's a fun group. It's an eight-piece group. We have four horn players. Um, people double on different things. There's a guy who plays steel drum, and uh, we have a couple of percussionists. And uh, but you know, bass, drums, keyboards, guitar. I play guitar and percussion and sing. Everyone. There's a whole lot of. It's a lot of fun. Really kind of high energy group. 
with really nice horn arrangements. And uh, so that, that group's been real popular up here. And the scene's pretty cool, actually, and Brattleboro is starting to get better. Um, things were a little dead in the 90s, but things are really starting to come back now, which is great. People are coming out and supporting music again. And uh, you have some really interesting uh, performances coming up. The computer's a little far away for me to read from here. Um, you want to drop a few of them for our listeners and let them know? Well, one of the things I'd like to let people know about if they're coming through Brattleboro on a Wednesday is we're doing, um, I began an, on- an ongoing Wednesday night series called the Wednesday Night Song Jam, and we had a really great show last night with a nice uh, duo from Waitley Mass called Moonlight and Morning Star. They kind of do, I'd say, new age soul and some spoken word and a bunch of different things, but Moonlight has this great voice. He's a black guy. He sounds like Donnie, ha- uh, Donnie Hathaway. He's okay. a wonderful wow. singer. And, um, and they've got a real gospel influence in what they do, and it's this nice thing. So the song jam happens every Wednesday night in Brattleboro, and right now the the venue's a little up in the air. We did the, we've been playing at the Common Ground, but I think we're going to move it right now. I think it's going to be moving to the River Garden in Brattleboro, which is a new space, uh, public space there, which is a really nice space. But um, things are, uh, you know, it's a really fun event, and if you're coming through town, just ask people where's the Wednesday night song jam, and people will probably be able to tell you where it's going to be because it's going to be, I think, a real popular event. And all the information for upcoming performances and uh, especially buying the CD uh, is available from Derek's website, D-E-R-R-I-K-J-O-R-D-A-N.com. And how, how about yourself as a musician? I know you play so many different instruments. Uh, could, you, could you say what's your strong suit and what, what you uh, need to brush up on or what? Maybe, <laughs> maybe tackle a new instrument? Should I tell people my weaknesses? Oh, I, maybe, <laughs> well, you, I'm not putting you on the spot, Alan. I'm kidding, I'm kidding around, <laughs> right. sure. Um, you know, I, um, I think probably that technically I'm best on the violin and on percussion and singing, but um, I used to do a lot of singing uh, in New York City, working as a jingle singer and, uh, and songwriting with a lot of different people down there. But um, I love, I really consider myself a songwriter, and so I play guitar and keyboards to support my songwriting so I can write songs. But, uh, you know, I just, when you play percussion like I do, there's just so many instruments that sort of fall under that category, from things like kalimba and steel drum, and yeah, uh, there's a whole bunch of sounds, and right. hand percussion and stick percussion, and there's a lot of different instruments there. And uh, your other CD that you released... Um back in 97, uh, Expecting a Miracle, um, just just another diverse-sounding uh, CD. Mm. How about the, the, the title, Expecting a Miracle? That, that took me. Um, h- how did you come about using that? You know, I really I couldn't come up with a title for the record, and then I was thinking about it. Well, maybe I should just name it after one of the songs, right, on the record. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that seems pretty simple, right? So um, it seemed like that was just a good title because, you know, about I really like to write positive music and I know that um, there are a lot of people out there now that are writing you know cynical cynical music or you know kind of music that's really kind of world weary or you know sometimes it seems like that uh, a lot of people are part of the whatever generation you know it's like whatever is the motto you know Mm -hmm. the motto of the day the call of the day you know and I, I just think that I'm still trying to and still finding meaning in life and trying to do the you know do something positive out here because I think that there's a lot a lot to be said for all our things we have in this life and the relationships we have with people and there's a lot of good things we can do well one of your great friends uh, collaborated with you on on both of these CDs Tom T bone walk mm-hmm. and uh, how did you guys uh, come together and and what's the working relationship like uh, he's a very good friend of mine and He's um, quite a well-known musician, and uh, in his own well, in his own right, for sure, he's uh, he used to be on the Saturday Night Live band for a bunch of years in the early days, and uh, has been a mainstay with Hall and Oates throughout their career. Right. G. Smith with him, yeah. G. Smith. He's played a lot with Carly Simon, and been a musical director for her in the past. He's played with many, many people, including Sean Colvin, and gee, I can't even keep track of all the people he's played with. He just gets around. Um, great, great player, known primarily in the business as a bass player, but he's equally good as a guitar player and keyboardist, which a lot of people don't know that, and just a tremendous uh, musical mind, and great arranger, and great producer. 
he co-produced my first record with me and played on my second with me. But um, we got together because um, he was really interested in Brattleboro. I was moving up here from Westchester County and uh, moved up to Brattleboro. And um, we got got together and, uh, you know, just started having some, you know, related very much musically and started playing together a bit. And, um, you know, it's been a great it's been a great time with him. And uh, your CD, Touch the Earth. Uh, why don't we get into another song off it, give people uh, another taste of it. Mm. Um, Endangered Species. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, how did you uh, create this one? Mm-hmm. This one is, um, I'm playing everything on it. Um, you know, it's a song that is very uh, a bit mysterious and atmospheric and it's almost like riddles. And I wanted to uh, really... It's all questions. The song is just a lot of questions, and it's really just a way for people to think about, um, consider some various ways that they relate to the earth and to each other. And we'll give it a listen right now, and Touch the Earth contains 13 songs and just great uh, trips to different kinds of music, reggae. You have some samba, some funk, some salsa and Afro-pop, and uh, we'll come back and talk more with Derek Jordan. And that's another great selection off of Derek Jordan's Touch the Earth. And it's called Endangered Species. And my special guest right now is Derek Jordan, all the way from Vermont. And uh, originally from New Jersey. I was born in New Jersey, too. So, oh, yeah? yeah. Cool. Didn't, didn't spend too many years there. But, yeah. but it, um, let, you know, I was reading something off your bio, and, and this, this is very interesting for, for our uh, listening audience about your experience uh a sacred uh, ceremony uh maybe you ought to pronounce it hamblecas hamblecha hamblecha yeah. okay um with chief phil crazy bull and the citizens awareness network okay well yeah what the, the citizens awareness network is actually the anti-nuclear group that i work with and that's okay totally separate from my work with uh, chief phil crazy bull but to talk about um, the Hamblechas that I did with him. Hamblecha is means vision quest, and literally it translates from the Lakota language as crying for a vision. And what the traditional Lakota vision quest is, is you go out in the woods um, for four days and four nights um, without food or water, and you basically pray there um, in a space, in a sacred space that you create for yourself. And you're alone, and you're not allowed to have anything with you, really, except, you know, a sleeping bag, um, <clears throat> some warm clothes, um, a, a, a rain protection, your tarp or something. Um, no fire. You're not allowed to have a fire or, you know, or <laughs> radio or <clears throat> tape recorders or anything like that. Notebooks. You can't have any of that. And you're supposed to really just meditate and contemplate and pray and really ask for a vision in your life that can help you have a better life and you know, find what really your path is to really find your way. And, and this was a really powerful time for me. I did four of them in four consecutive years. So, you know, after that, you really get to know yourself a lot better, or I did anyway. I got to know myself a lot better and got to really find out some, what was really more important to me and what was less important. And so it's been a very powerful and very empowering experience, and I, I really recommend it to people who are looking for some kind of transformational experience in their lives. And you're an independent artist, and uh, with, with the CD, what, what has been working to get the word out about uh, your great music and, and the CD Touch the Earth? Well, you know, it's great when uh, guys like you play it on the radio. That's right. the most excellent thing of all. And there's so a lot of, there's about a 40 stations are playing it around the country right now, which is really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, doing a bunch of shows in the area as well, and uh, sending it out to uh, different film studios and TV studios to try and get them to pick up cuts for different projects. Um, you know, word of mouth is always the best. And our listeners, as they listen to the interview, and we're going to play a couple songs right now from uh, Mr. Derek Jordan, you can go to his website, D-E-R-R-I-K-J-O-R-D-A-N.com, and you can find out all information about ordering the CD and also upcoming performances and and some great uh, causes that he's involved with and, and important information. You can just go through the different uh, 
uh, toolbar and click on the links and, and find out even a question and answer. Um, and by the way, 10% of the profits of all World Soul Records, uh, Derek's record label, he donates to uh, Profits for the Planet. Uh, so so uh, that that's a really noble cause that you're working with there, giving money back. Well, yeah, it would be great, especially if I started to make a profit. I that's do. right. <laughs> L- listeners, come on. <laughs> come on, you kick could, it in. Yeah, kick right. it in now. That's right. Don't hold back. Right. <laughs> so, so why don't we get into um, maybe something else from... Uh, Touch the Earth Indigenous, and um, we'll we'll go back a few years, not too long ago, from Mm -hmm. something from Expecting a Miracle, and let's see, how about Let the Buyer Beware? Mm -hmm. That'll get people dancing a little bit here. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to thank you, Derek. Thank you, Joe. Hope to have you down in the studio. Yeah, yeah. We we had a violin player on Monday show playing live. So oh yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah it'd be great. I'd love to come down sometime. So, I yeah. do a lot of electric violin stuff, you know, um, solo and whatever. Doing right. loop, using loop technology, which is kind of fun. Yeah, Might so be fun to do sometime. Yeah, in the new year we can have you down and and uh, okay, bring some of your friends if you want. Just want to let you know yeah. too that my um, I just found out that uh, three of my three of the songs from my record Touch the Earth were nominated for um, you know. Uh, awards for just on this group just plain folks i don't know if you've heard oh of yeah yeah i in fact i know brian uh whitney austin or austin whitney brian austin whitney a wonderful wonderful guy yeah. real, a true musical visionary i think right and um my song standing prayer was nominated for best contemporary song and my song uh something from the change for best reggae song and the instrumental track from the cd uh which is called undying for best instrumental so it's really that's, quite that's, an honor. Yeah, that's great. I, I mean, their organization's grown so far and to be, you know, selected from that many musicians. Wow. Oh, yeah. That, that's a great honor. It really is. Yeah. So thanks again, Derek. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And, and our support for, for any musical cause that you have and otherwise definitely here, here on the Upper Room on WVOF. Cool. All right. This is music from Derek Jordan. <laughs> 